Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and today I am so excited to show you about the Behringer Wing and the entire ecosystem that's surrounding this product. Now, this is the first of a few different videos that I am releasing on this product. So this is going to be a full video series. So this is not just the only video. So keep an eye out for the other ones as I'm going to be going through an overview in this video and then get more into the nitty gritty on the next and then talk about the software portions that Behringer has released for controlling this mixer, the monitors, and everything else from that. The Wing is part of a series of consoles, including the Wing Full Size, Wing Rack, and Wing Compact to best suit your needs. Now the Behringer Wing is a 48 channel digital mixer. Now this thing is super flexible. The 48 channels can be either set in a mono, a stereo, or a mid side, meaning that this console can actually process up to 96 inputs over those 48 channels. Now internally, this console has 16 mix buses that can be set to a pre-fader, a post-fader, or a subgroup. So you not only can set up your streaming mix, but you can also set up your monitors or your subgroups on those 16 mix buses. Now every one of those 16 mix buses is stereo. Then you have four main stereo buses, as well as eight stereo matrices. So with those four main stereo buses and the eight stereo matrices, you can feed all of your output destinations with your PA, your streaming, all of that you can feed in the way that you really want to. And not only can you feed all of those in stereo, but all of those main buses, the mix buses, and the matrices not only have a full dynamic section, but also a full EQ section built into all of those internally. Now the Behringer Wing full size gives us a whole lot of controls at our fingertips. There are 20 four faders going all the way across this console. We also have eight Midas Pro Series XLR inputs, as well as eight Midas Pro Series XLR outputs. And this also has eight TRS line level inputs, as well as eight line level TRS outputs available to us. Now the Behringer Wing has a touch screen right here for us to be able to control every function on this mixer. Not only is it large and gives us a lot of information, but the touch surface of this works very well for navigating any of the channels that we want to. Now there's also dual network ports on the back of the console where you can control this via many of the different software applications and applications for your computer or your tablet or even your phone. On your computer, there is the Wing Edit software, which we can control all of the functions of the Behringer Wing via that software. We also have a Wing Copilot, which is the app for tablets, which you can control your front of house mix as well as mixing your monitors for the band. And then on the phone side, there is a Wing Q application for giving to your musicians up on stage, and they're able to adjust their mix bus without touching your front house mix. Now, like I was saying, the Behringer Wing has 48 stereo or mono channels, and that's 96 inputs that's available to us. Now, to cover all of those inputs, we also have to think about the outputs that the board can do as well. And so when we're thinking of the Behringer Wing, there is a lot of input ports and output ports. And so that's best to separate your thinking into input sources and output destinations. Now on the input sources side, we have three AES-50 connections that allow us to have 48 channels of bi-directional audio traveling down a single shielded Cat5 cable. Now if you add up all of those three ports, that's 144 channels that we can connect to with our Behringer Wing. Now this AES-50 protocol offers us super low latency audio, and again it's bi-directional, so not only can we receive audio from our stage boxes, but we can also send audio to the output ports on those stage boxes. So some of the really common stage boxes that you will use the Behringer Wing with would be the Behringer S32, the Behringer S16, the SD16, and the SD8. Or on the Midas side, we have the Midas DL32, and we also have the Midas DL16. Now all of the AES-50 connections for the Behringer Wing are going to either be at 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz. Now the Behringer Wing also features a brand new connection called Stage Connect. Now Stage Connect allows us to send 32 channels of audio down a single XLR cable 
And if you're using a DMX style data cable for that XLR, you can send the audio 40 meters or 130 feet. Now using Stage Connect, we have those 32 channels down that single XLR cable. Now we can define if we want all of those to be 32 inputs or 32 outputs, or we can choose any combination as long as we don't go over 32 channels on that Stage Connect connection. Now, one of my favorite uses of Stage Connect is using the Clark Technic DN4816U, which allows us to connect our computer up to the Stage Connect of our Behringer Wing. And we can send our 32 outputs from a Trax computer to the Behringer Wing. However, we can use the Behringer Wing with all of the Stage Connect devices that Behringer, Midas, or Clark Technic makes. Now the Behringer Wing also features a 64 by 64 channel expansion card on the back of the Behringer Wing. And the Behringer Wing ships with what's called the Wing Live Card. Now the Wing Live Card allows you to record those 64 channels of audio to two SD cards on the back of your Wing Live Card. And then additionally, you can take those 64 channels and play them back onto your Behringer Wing. Now this is gonna be super beneficial if you are using this for a virtual sound check. We can take all of our audio from the stage, record it to our SD cards, and then when the band is not on stage anymore, you can play that audio back into your Behringer Wing and mix as if the band is up on the stage. Now additionally, there is an internal audio over IP module inside of the Behringer Wing that allows us to do 64 channels of input and 64 channels channels of output. Now on my Behringer Wing, I have a Dante card inserted on it. So I have 64 by 64 for our Dante connection. Now the best thing about these two ports with the expansion card and the internal module is you can use both of them at the same time. So if you used a Dante audio over IP internally in the module and a wing Dante card, you could have 128 channels of Dante connectivity on your Behringer Wing. Now on the back of the Behringer Wing, we have a USB 2.0 connection that you can connect your Behringer Wing to your computer and have 48 channels of audio input and 48 channels of audio output. Now I love using this connectivity for being able to have a backup recording on top of the audio that's being recorded to my Wing Live card. Now over that same USB connection, we have HUI and Mackie control for controlling your favorite DAW. So we have all these audio inputs for the Behringer Wing, but let's actually look at how the Behringer Wing can internally process this audio. Now, like I was saying, this board is a 48 channel console. Now there are 40 channels of main processing and eight auxiliary channels that have slightly less processing. But let's go ahead and dive in and see what those actually look like. So I have my channel one pulled up, which is uh, my kick drum. And so we have our home tab, which gives us a nice overview of everything of this channel. Now our next tab down, down is our channel input. So we have our preamp gain, a trim, as well as delay, and our activation of a high cut, a low cut, and what's called a tilt EQ. We then have our gate processing of the channel, which we can fully configure how we want. We then have our six band fully parametric EQ. We then have our compression, as well as two insert points. Now the great thing is I can move all of these in a different order. If I was wanting to have my compression be first before my gate, I can simply go and press this gear and then move my compression above. Now on our channel, our gate, our EQ, and our dynamics have 33 different effects emulations that are built into the console, which model classic EQs, compressors, and gates, which are used all throughout the industry. Now our two insert slots can utilize all of our 16 effects racks that are built in on the Behringer wing. Now, if we start looking at our auxiliary channels, we can see that we have our home tab, we have the ability of inverting our polarity, which we can also do on our main channels, but then we have a built-in dynamic section, which has a gate and a compressor built into the same dynamic slot. We then have our six band fully parametric EQ, as well as a single insert point to again use those 16 internal effects racks. 
Now, these effects racks have 63 different effect simulations that we can utilize on the Behringer wing, and all of this is built into the effects processing of the wing. Now, the Behringer wing has 16 stereo mix buses, four stereo main buses, eight stereo matrix sections, and then we also have 24 user patching as well as 24 user routing to be able to connect our Behringer wing to all of our output destinations. Now, like I was saying, all of the audio connections of the Behringer wing are bi-directional. So all of the things that I mentioned for inputs also work as outputs. So our three AES ports that are on the back of the Behringer wing that allow us to connect to 144 different inputs also allow us to connect to 144 different outputs on those same ports. Now, with AES-50 being a standardized protocol, not only can we get to the output ports on those digital stage boxes, but we can utilize the alternate output on some of those stage boxes as well. Now, with that alternate connectivity, we can interface with the Behringer P16 monitoring system or any alternate enabled floor monitors or speakers. Additionally, using the AES-50, we could even connect to the Midas DP48 to give 48 channels of audio for your two musicians using that one single unit for their monitoring system. Now on the output side, we also have our stage connect, our expansion card, our internal audio over IP module, and the USB connection that's on the back of the board. But the wing also has a few more little goodies in it. There is a USB section on the top left of your Behringer wing that we can put a USB drive in. Now, this allows us to record four channels to a WAV file. Now, my favorite thing about this is I typically will record my stereo left-right mix and then be able to critique my mix at a later time. So let's go ahead and set up my stage with my Behringer wing. Now I could utilize any of the eight Midas Pro Series XLR inputs, but I'm gonna actually utilize my AES-50 connections. Now I'm gonna run a single shielded Cat5 cable to get my 48 channels of audio inputs and outputs to my stage. I'm also gonna run a DMX cable for my stage connect to get my audio from my tracks computer, which is utilizing the Clark Technic DN4816U. For monitoring, my band is going to be using a combination of P16s, DP48s from Midas, and a wireless in-ear for the remainder of my band. Now I have my Midas DL32 sitting on the side stage, and I'm going to place this Behringer SD8 for my keys and my guitar player inputs. I will also be utilizing the powered alternate output on the SD8 to connect my Behringer P16 personal monitor mixers for my keys player. Now, because my musicians are using stereo in-ear monitors, I'm going to set up a Wi-Fi network for controlling with a tablet and have my A2 or some of the musicians mix their own ears either utilizing the Wing Copilot app or the Wing Q app on a phone. Now, I'm grateful that my band has a rehearsal before the actual performance, so I'm going to utilize the Wing Live card to record 64 channels of audio for a virtual sound check at a later time. Now, I could also utilize the 48 channels of my USB 2 connection on the back of the Wing if I wanted to as well. Now, I am always a fan of having a backup for everything. So not only would I be recording my show with my Wing Live card, but I'd also be utilizing that USB connection. Now there's one more trick that the Behringer Wing has internally on the channel routing, and that's that there's a main input and an alt input for every channel on the board. And so this is actually a really cool thing if you're wanting to set up a fast changeover between the stage inputs and our virtual sound check. So we can go to our channels here and we can go and select an alternate input and this could be directly from our Wing Live card or in another use of this, we can actually set this up as a hot backup for our lead vocal mic. So on my lead vocal, I could go and select an additional input where the backup microphone is selected. And then if I have an issue with my main lead vocal microphone, all I have to do is go to my alternate input for the hot backup mic that's ready to go. Now, what's really neat about this is I don't have to burn an additional channel on my board. I can simply set up the alternate input for any of those channels that I want to have that backup input for. Now, with the virtual sound check side of things, I can go to my setup 
I can go to audio and I can do a global change between main and alt, meaning that I can set up all of my alternate inputs for all my channels to be from a virtual sound check. And then once my band is done, I can simply go from main to alt to being on my virtual sound check. And then once I'm done with the virtual sound check, I can go back to main to get all of my stage inputs from the stage again. Now, if I wanted to have an advanced setup where I had a Behringer wing at front of house, a Behringer wing in monitors for adjusting the monitors of the band, and multiple stage boxes, I can utilize all three AES-50 ports to be able to set that up. Simply plug the second console into one of the AES-50 ports and route the audio accordingly. I hope this video was helpful for you for learning more about the Behringer wing. Now, stay tuned to the next video in this series as we dive deeper on the Behringer wing.